Shine bright, shine far. Be a star where you live, where you are. Be a star. Hey guys, it's Kristen, and today we're talking about Life Size 2, A Christmas Eve. So this is a sequel to the original Life Size movie that came out in 2000. That story was about a girl named Casey who was played by a young Lindsay Lohan who had just lost her mom and she was just really struggling and kind of lost and you know couldn't connect with her friends or her dad or anyone. She was just very like angry and closed off. She buys a spell book to try to resurrect her mom and accidentally ends up bringing to life this Eve doll, kind of like a Barbie doll, played by Tyra Banks. And 18 years later, we're back with a sequel. Tyra Banks is reprising her role as Eve. It's me. Eve. But she's got a new goal and there's a little bit of a holiday twist. In this new story, Francia Arisa plays Grace, a socialite and the young CEO of Marathon Toys, which was the company that her mom created. Her mom actually created the Eve doll, but now she's in jail. Because of that, Grace now has to step up and take over, but she really doesn't want to. Grace is really bitter, she's lonely, she's upset and mad at her mom, and she is just kind of spiraling out of control and being very self-destructive. And then when the company goes into to bankruptcy, she votes to discontinue the Eve dolls and any other older toys that aren't selling as well. When her young neighbor learns about this, she insists that they use this spell book that they found in Grace's mom's belongings to bring Eve to life to help her save the company. So I did go back and watch the original Life Size after seeing this movie just to kind of see what was the difference and the similarities, how did it compare, and I have to say that First of all, I'm very impressed with how many references to the original they were able to put in this, as well as some of the similarities of the storylines and also just some of the pop culture references in general that they included in this movie. The spell book is the same spell book. We actually learned that Lindsay Lohan's character Casey sent it to Grace's mom, and we see a throwback picture of Casey in the book. We meet Eve in a similar way to the original where she wakes up in the bed of the person that she's gonna help. So in the original she woke up in Casey's bed and in this one she woke up next to Grace. She also saves them from getting hit by a car in both movies. Of course she has a passion for fashion, beauty, and eating butter. There's even a moment where they reference Grace's 100 watt smile which was something that Casey's dad said to her in the original film. Eve kind of brings some fun into each girl's life to get them feeling more themselves. In the first movie she has a girls night with Casey and in this movie she has like this winter wonderland extravaganza fun with Grace because, you know, this is a Christmas movie. And of course Eve performs Be A Star which is the iconic song from this film but later on we even get a trap update. I don't know if we really needed that but we got it regardless. Some other pop culture references in this movie, Lil Yachty makes a guest appearance which was super random but kind of cool and we even get to see Eve reference one of Tyra's most iconic memeable moments from America's Next Top Model. I'm pretty sure you know what scene I mean. I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! I will admit I really liked Francia Reyes in this film. I thought that she brought like a level to Grace where yes she was a socialite, she was a party girl, she was struggling but at the same time you could see that she had some good in her that was worth building and working on. I also thought it was really cool that when we got to see Grace and her mom meet up we saw them speak in Spanish. We got to see this Latina woman kind of discover herself and find happiness and be this like young boss CEO and I feel like you don't get to see that very often. Shout out to the Latinas out there who are making moves. I also thought in general that this film was really diverse in a really natural way. On the other hand, well it looks like Tyra Banks had a lot of fun making this film. I thought that she was really different from the Eve that we saw in the original movie. You know in the first Life Size she was a little bit odd but she was very sweet. It was very much like this person in a new world, you know, discovering things, figuring things out and you kind of get to see that like wide-eyed innocence and I thought that she did a really really great job in the original movie. In this film I thought that she was just a little too wacky, a little too out there. I didn't think it really worked. It felt like we were watching a different Eve. It's time for you to go because I'm pretty sure you're crazy. Crazy for you crazy girl. You know when she first meets Grace they spend way too long on this one night stand joke that I just feel like didn't really land. I think that happened a lot in this film where they tried to make things a little bit more adult to cater to the original audience who watched the 
the first film and I think they didn't really need to do that. I think they could have made it a film that was like universally fun for everyone. I think them trying to make it a little bit more mature just kind of made it seem a little cheesy at times. In my opinion, the best scene was when we got to see the other Eves. Eve calls them on the phone to get some help and advice on what she should do to help Grace. We got to see the OG Eve and Secretary Eve, which was really funny because they made references there to that moment in the original movie. But that made me think, okay, so she's calling the OG Eve on the phone. That means that's the one who dealt with Casey. This is a completely different Eve. So my thought is maybe they were trying to give her a different personality so that she kind of was a little bit different from the original Eve, but I just don't think it worked. I think she was just a little too wacky and zany and I was like, oh, is this what it was like in the original? She played the roles very differently. So Eve spends the film trying to convince Grace not to cancel the Eve dolls, not to discontinue them, and they end up getting a whole bunch of young girls together for a focus group to find out what do they really want to see in Eve. I think there were definitely really good intentions of trying to make Eve 2.0 very modern and relevant to what's going on in the world today. I think they were really trying to tackle politics and gender and things like that. And Unfortunately, I think that it just didn't really land. You know, when they revealed Woke Eve and Love is Love Eve and Curvilicious Eve, it just felt a little too on the nose, it felt a little out of touch as if, you know, the person who wrote the script was like, all right, I'm an old person, tell me what are young people into? Ah, woke, yes. Woke Eve! Let's go with that! You know, like, I, I wish that they had done it in a way that just felt a little bit more authentic. Because I do think that there was, like, good intentions there. And we even got to see an Eve with a football outfit on, just like Casey wore in the original movie. So that was kind of a fun reference there. We also get to see Eve get a love interest in this film. His name is Chef Hyde. And at the end of the film, he decides he loves Eve so much he wants to follow her to Sunnyvale and, oh, you know, spoiler alert, BECOME A DOLL! I was just honestly like really horrified at this at this happening in this film. This guy didn't really know what he was getting into, but he just gave up his whole life to become a doll, and Grace is holding the two dolls like, oh magic! Like what? This was a living, breathing human being with a life, and now he is a doll. I don't know, that sounds like a nightmare. And of course, you know, by the end of the film, things end up happily ever after, or I mean, in Chef Hyde's case, as happily ever after as it can be when you become a doll. But we get to see Grace reunite with her mom when it turns out out of nowhere there is this kind of like criminal conspiracy going on and her mom really wasn't responsible for whatever it was that led her to go to jail, so she's out of jail. Grace gets a boyfriend, the Eve doll is saved, the company is saved, but is that it? I mean, it looks like Tyra Banks is open to a third film. My opinion, I don't think we needed this second film. I think that there could have been potential, but after watching it, this was just not necessary. It just felt like it was trying too hard and I don't think it was as good as the original movie. So that's my thoughts. I would love to know what you guys think about Life Size 2. How did it compare to the original Life Size movie in your opinion? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click that subscribe button because I come out with new videos every week. See ya!